Rabbi Beryl Lazar, Chief Rabbi of Russia, emissary appointed by the late Rabbi of Lubavitch to Russia and from there to former Soviet Union, uh, a person, a member of the Elijah Board of World Religious Leaders and a person with tremendous responsibility for a very significant Jewish community tackling COVID-19 at this point of time. Rabbi Lazar, what have been your main challenges in this pandemic? I think that uh, it's surely a challenging time for every single human being around the world. And uh, we all have to try to do whatever we can to help each other, to help others, to go through this period and uh, remain strong, healthy, and positive. I think that uh, what is expected from us, uh, maybe even especially in Russia, is really to juggle two kinds of worlds. On one end, we understand that we have a responsibility to tell people what to do. People have to understand how they have to act in such times. And one of the first things that we did, we actually were the first ones in Russia to tell people to go into quarantine. The synagogues here in Russia were the first ones to close down, much before actually the Muslims and the Russian Orthodox Church followed us much later. And we have been really blessed with great miracles because of what we did. We understood right away that what we have to do is close down everything, schools, kindergartens, uh, social centers, everything, and get people into their homes and locked up. That's on one end. On the other hand, we are here not to scare people, but actually to give optimism and uh, you know, security to people. Security, I mean uh, moral and spiritual security. So juggling these two worlds, telling people that on one end, yes, you have to uh, believe in God, trust in God, but your belief is actually what is pushing you to go into quarantine. Going to quarantine and following what doctors or professionals are saying is not just uh, because we are scared. It's because this is what God is expecting from us. In other words, giving people these tools to understand that by sitting at home today, not going to synagogue, not praying in a, together with the quorum, with a minyan, is actually God's will. And this is the source of blessings for everything spiritual and material was actually quite complicated, but I think that we managed to give these people an understanding that right now you're fulfilling God's will by sitting at home. So I, I think it's important that we should always understand that we have two worlds. There's a world of nature and world of miracles, and these two are not different or not connected. They're fully interconnected. When we act, according to the laws of nature, whether it's a person doing business and he goes and he you know, tries very hard, somebody goes to a doctor, and then he asks God's blessings in what he does, this is really the way uh, we should understand how to go through these challenges. In such times, you see even more how these two parts in our lives are really interconnected and helping each other. So this is... So this seems to be the key teaching. It's God's will, accept God's will, accept the changes. But there must, you, you refer to all kinds of other aspects of positive thinking, courage. After all, it's one thing to be locked up in a house. It's another, it's another to know what to do with yourself and how, and how to accept that as a spiritual process. What resources have you drawn on in order to give people meaning in their quarantine situation? What I would say is uh, there's a, actually a, a very powerful statement from the Baal Shem Tov, the, the founder of Hasidism, that he said, when God wants to punish someone, he takes away his faith and belief. It's even more than faith and belief, it's the word bitachon, assurance. When somebody is sure that everything is going to be good and it's going to turn out well, and he has this positivity, this optimism, this assurance that everything is good, this is actually the best medicine for somebody to heal in any kind of situation. If somebody, God forbid, ends up in a hospital, doctors say if he has this you know, positivity and he's sure he's going to come out healthy, this adds to 30-40% of his chances to come out well. Especially in such times. I believe people, even if they catch the virus, if they're in such a mode of positivity, which is also, again, leading a healthy life, exercising, everything. 
everything, but more than anything is this bitachon, this having this really powerful positivity in your life that everything will be great, everything will be amazing. What is happening today is only to make us stronger. As we say, you know, whatever doesn't kill us makes us even stronger. This bitachon, that this is coming from above, and this is a test. We're going to go through the test, we're going to come out much healthier, much stronger, much better people, much more uh, compassionate for everything that's going on, with a much stronger belief in God. Till now, people were sure that they can solve anything. Like my granddaughter asked me, why doesn't Google have an answer? She's six years old. Why doesn't Google have an answer when this virus is going to end? This is the whole point. Till now, people were sure that Google has any answer. We used to call them Rabbi Google, has answers to all questions. All of a sudden, we realize that there are things that we don't have answers to. And this is something that not one person in the world understands where it began, how it's going to end, when it's going to end. It's really the trust in something much greater than us is what gives us the power to come out of this much stronger. Um, do you see it working? Do you get reports from the community? Are people having doubts in faith and trust? Do, are people strengthened? In other words, this is the general direction. It's now you've been playing at it for about a month. What? Uh, how is it playing out in people's lives? What can you report? First of all, I see a strong, strong desire and interest in connecting to something higher than we were used to. Whether it's for somebody keeping the Shabbat, for somebody else praying, somebody else, it's uh, really going out of his way to help others. People realize that there's much more to life than just, I mean, you know, Russia, the Russians know how to party and how to have fun and how to enjoy life. So this was all good and fine, but people realize that you can't live with that. It's not something that you really uh, live when such situations happen, and it awakened people to understand that we have to have something much stronger that keeps us, you know, again, in this positive mood, whether it's family, the community, again, helping each other, learning, uh, connecting to God or anything more spiritual. People today say that, you know, without their 10 minutes of praying in the morning or half hour of praying in the morning, or without them sitting by the Shabbat table with the family, they feel completely lost. So these things that which have been eternal values by the Jewish people are proving now to be essential. I would say even, you know, uh, it's the source of uh, normality in life when you have a schedule, when you know that you're going to wake up in the morning, ask God for help, thank him for everything that we have, and you realize what we really have is not so little. We thank God, you know, we thank God healthy, and we have our family, we have whatever each person has to thank God for. And at the same time, special time for the family to come together. This is the Shabbat table. Just to give an idea, for the first time ever, we had people that are telling us that we were able to celebrate Passover eight days, keeping it at its best. People that never thought that they can do such a thing. People are saying, we realize what Friday night is in our family. It's like a savior. This is really what's keeping us together. We're having discussions. We're singing songs together. We're com so people can look at the quarantine as something terrible and, and a terrible, you know, uh, time for all of us. People can say, you know what, it's a time for self. Uh, people like looking into themselves uh, and understanding what really I am. Who am I? I always used to have this, uh, when we sit around the Shabbat table with many guests, I used to ask people to introduce themselves and say who they are. And people normally answered, who am I? I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor. I said, I'm not asking you what your profession is. I'm not asking you what you do for a living. I'm asking you who you are. And today when people are at home, it's a time to really look deep inside of us and think, who are we? And no question the people that have had success in their family, of having their children around them, are in a much better place than others. People that are having a discussion with their friends and, and, and they have a community of friends, they're living a different life. We, we just started the program, just something that could be, I'm sure, copied and uh, pasted anywhere. Every member of our community that celebrates his birthday, we have a surprise Zoom gathering of everybody in the community. So everybody gets on and everybody's sending him wishes and everybody's, you know, and, and this person, and all of a sudden the cake is delivered to his home. So this person is like, you know, his dream came true. He, he thought he was going to have his birthday alone in quarantine. All of a sudden he realized that there's a whole community celebrating with him. 
but this could be used and multiplied in many different areas to really show people how important friends, community, family are actually in our lives. When people used to work from morning to night, and that was their main focus, they forgot how important these other aspects in their lives were. Um, you're Italian born, and we know that. So I want to share with you something that I heard two days ago from the Bishop of Assisi. I spoke to him about what's going on in Italy. I spoke to him about, you know, you know what Assisi is. And he told me, I asked, and he, you know, they, everyone struggles with this problem. People can't come to the synagogue. They can't come to the churches. What to do? And he said, for him, the most important thing is suddenly the discover of religion in the family. And he said he was teaching his parishioners, look at the Jews and how they do Seder in the family. We have to learn from the Jews what the power of family is. So it's so inspiring for me to then hear that you're basically coming back with this testimony in 2020, Moscow, we're rediscovering religion in the family. Because I've been to Marina Rocha, I've been, I've been received beautifully by your community there. I know how everything is in the building, in the community, in the, in, 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 and I say to myself, how can they function? Well, you've given the beautiful answer. Family, and then I, I suppose complemented then by the Zoom and, 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 and re reconstituting community in other ways. Beautiful. Um, okay, I'd like to add something. Let me just share with you a story that I heard last night. Uh, this story of the Vidru that lives in Krasnodar, in the south of Russia. And this person, till a few years ago, was completely unaffiliated. He, he reconnected with Judaism because his uh, father and mother passed away. That's when he came to synagogue to figure out what he should do, because he knew that they were somehow connected to, to Jewish people, and that's how his connection started. And for a few years, he had been coming to these public seders, which we organized in the community. People have no knowledge how to run a seder. So we, every year we arrange, in, like you said, in Marina Russia, we have like close to 5,000 people coming to these public seders. In every room, every floor, we have hundreds and hundreds of people in all the buildings around. So these are, this has been our community, a public seder. People don't even realize that there's something called a family seder. And this Jew called last night and he said, I want to let you know that I'm never again going to come to a public Seder. And when I first heard, I said, oh my gosh. And he said, the Seder this year was unbelievable. You have no idea what it meant for our family to be together at a Seder table. And never knew that a Seder could be so meaningful, so special, having such discussions late into the night. So exactly, I would say that the uniqueness of the Jewish religion is that 95% of our connection to God is not in a certain building. It's not when you are only in the synagogue or in a certain uh, location. It's everywhere. God is everywhere. God is especially in our home. He's also in our business uh, offices or whatever, but he's number one in our home. Tradition and, and Jewish life is centered around the home. You wake up in the morning, you teach your children. Before they go to sleep, you teach your children. When any moment that you are at home, you have to use it at its utmost to teach a lesson to your children. And I'm telling the people in our community, you should know that right now, every minute is like a year, a year ago. Why? Because the lessons that you can teach your children when you are at home are going to last for their whole life. Your children are never going to forget this period of time, how you acted, how you reacted, what you showed us an example. What were the discussions? Your positivity. If you're going to now break down, that's what the children are going to remember. A father that at the time of crisis fell apart. If you're going to show how strong you are and how excited you are to be with them, and you're going to use this time to teach them lessons that are going to last forever, you use this opportunity. So I can imagine someone coming to you and saying, Rabbi, where do I draw my strength from? Where do I draw my... My bitachon, my trust in God, where do I draw my positivity from? What's your answer? Number one, there are a lot of books, and you have to learn. This is a time of uh, the, each one of us should really find some text. Today, the internet is filled with the amazing lectures and, uh, and things that are available. Uh, if you can't find these books, you know, deliver to your home. Number one, you have to learn. You have to learn, you have to understand what religion is all about. Faith in God is, like somebody told me a few days ago, I called up a businessman that I knew that uh, things are not easy for anyone. 
And I asked him, what's going on? He says, finally, now I know that it's fully dependent on God. I'll share with you a small Hasidic story. There was once a, a teacher in the yeshiva who late at night after the whole day of learning comes back at home, knocks on the door, the wife opens up, and she sees that he has 25 students with him. So she looks at him and says, uh, my dear husband, what's going on? He says, we decided to come together for a Hasidic for bringing. We're going to sit around the table and, and have a discussion. And everybody knows that Hasidic for bringing, you put down some uh, uh, vodka or wine, and there's some food on the table. And the wife says, uh, my, my dear love, you know, we have almost nothing at home. All we have is like uh, just some few herring and uh, probably, I don't know, half a bottle of vodka. That's all there is. So he tells her, listen, I want to tell you, what we don't have, I'm not expecting from you. But what we do have, I want you to give it the fullest. That's exactly the message we're telling people today. What we cannot do, nobody's expecting us to do. Nobody's expecting us to, you know, uh, come out of this and find, uh, I don't know, you know, a million dollars. But what we, what we do have, everything that we have, use it at its fullest. In other words, this is trust in God. Whatever you can do, do it at its fullest. The rest, trust God is going to be okay. The minute that you connect with God and you put your trust into God, you become a different person. You are a giant. You are the most powerful, not because you are great, because God in you is giving you this strength and this greatness. So this is exactly what we're telling people. Where do you get the power from? It's really inside of you if you're going to connect to God. If you think that I'm on my own, I'm going to manage, and that's the way people felt till now when they had a lot of money in the bank or whatever, you know that they are invincible, the most powerful, because they have, who knows, guards or a uh, uh, business. Today they realize that without the connection to God, they're nothing. But once they're connected to God, they're the most amazing, powerful human being in the world. And, and, and this can give them strength to give others strength. Once you have the strong emuna, the strong belief in you, you become a different person. So maybe some people didn't even know what they had inside of them. So this bitachon is really, this trust is really something deep, deep inside of us, but we have to awaken it. When we are busy with everything else around us and we think that the stock market runs our world or some kind of president runs our world. So we forget that there's something much greater above that is really giving us the power to succeed. So I imagine you get on Zoom uh, every, every how often to, t to give a message to your community every day, every week? A few times a day. A few times a day. So can you share with us a teaching you've recently given your community along these lines, even in its specificity, then we can feel enriched by how your wisdom trans is transmitted to your community. So I'll just give you, I mean, this is, as I said, happened. We have different parts of the community. We have youth, we have people that are more advanced, we have people that are less advanced. Every person is different. But um, again, you, you have uh, different ages and different kinds, so each one gets the kind of support that he needs. Somebody that has been learning the Talmud every day, he needs a different kind of lesson than, you know, somebody that just uh, realized that he's Jewish and he, he got connected. But uh, I'll share with you one idea that just came up. Uh, we were learning Pirkei uh, Avot, and, uh, and actually I was giving two classes, I'm trying to think... Uh, Okay, let me tell you. So, actually, one class, just with beginners, we started the first Mishnah of Pirkei Avot. This is the teachings of our fathers, and uh, this is really more about our way. It, it's part of the Talmud, but it's more the way we deal with each other, the way we, we our own uh, feelings, our own uh, attitude to everything that's going on around us. So the first Mishnah actually talks about the way the Torah was given from Moses at Sinai and passed down to Joshua, from Joshua to the elderly, elderly to the uh, um, prophets, and eventually to the Sheikh Neset Akdolah, these people from this great gathering, who said three things. And the real question is, first of all, why is the Torah, 
why is this part of the Talmud starting with this Masoret, how the Torah was given over? It doesn't say this in the, when we learn about the blessings that we have to say, or about how we should keep the Shabbat. All of a sudden, when we talk about our attitude to each other, the Mishnah is actually has an important to teach us how it came down. And the, the Mishnah starts off, the Torah was given to Moses at Sinai. He received the Torah at Sinai. The truth is he received the Torah from God, not at Sinai. So why do we say at Sinai? And uh, there's a beautiful teaching of the Rebbe of Berdichev, who was known to be you know, the Hasidic leader that had love for every Jew. He says that actually you see something very interesting in Moses' life. When Moshe was asked to take the Jews out of Egypt, he was arguing with God for a whole week. He was saying, not me, they're better people, they're greater people. Why are you choosing me? And when all of a sudden God wants to give the Torah to the Jewish people, all of a sudden he's there. He doesn't say there's somebody greater, somebody smarter, somebody wiser. Why all of a sudden then he says, okay, Hineni, I'm ready to do it. And the answer is from Sinai. When he looked at Sinai, he looked at this small uh, little mountain. It was in the middle of the desert. No fancy place. It wasn't a Hollywood home. It wasn't a skyscraper in New York. It was just in the middle of the wilderness, in the middle of the desert, there's this little mountain, and God decided to give the Torah there. He says, this is exactly what God is telling me, that the Torah is given to the lowest of the lowest. And I feel that way by myself, so I realize that this is something where I belong. When you're talking about leadership or taking the Jews out of Egypt, he said, you need a great leader, you need a general, you need somebody that knows how to do what he's doing. It has, you know, he could speak well to Pharaoh and, and lead the Jewish people. And actually, the reason that he was convinced to go to Pharaoh, because he realized that the end game is going to be receiving the Torah on, on, on Sinai. This is a lesson in humbleness, which is so important today. It's what, first of all, most problems that we have today is because people think of themselves, you know, I'm always right, I'm always great. The problems in families, today, one of the big issues, you know, husband and wife are together for 24 hours a day, and we never had such a thing. And people all of a sudden get into some kind of argument. Remember, the basis of everything, where everything started, your relationship to other people, your learning, your understanding, everything starts from Sinai, from this understanding that I'm really not that great. I'm really, I used to think that I'm, you know, I can do anything. Today you're stuck at home, realize who you are, and this humbleness is going to help you to go through everything, to learn more, to listen more, to accept others' opinion, to, to really reconnect with who you really are. And of course, each one ha of us has his greatness. But again, his greatness is because of what God gave him. It's not, you know, man-made. We are really very, very small people. Such a small virus completely, you know, got us off guard. And all these great minds, they say, we don't know what's going on. The greatest doctor in the world says we still can't figure out what is going on. This is two, three months in the game. Nobody has any solution yet. Hopefully, with God's help, and again, with God's help, we're going to find a solution. But And what are we going to find? We're going to find something that was already created by God that is going to give us a solution. Nobody will create ex nihilo. Nobody will create something from nothing. We're not that great. We're very humble. This humbleness can help us go through this period and realize our greatness is our connection to God. Fantastic. It's even more fantastic because I happen to have learned this past Shabbat, this reading from Rabbi Levi Yitzchak. So it's so beautiful for me to see how you applied it in the today situation as a, teach, as a teaching force. Um, last time I think we bumped into each other. Last year we had a whole series of uh, accidental or, or providential meetings, first in Baku and then, then, then we bumped into each other in Rome. And you were just coming out of the synagogue in Rome, remember? Uh, out of the great synagogue, we saw each other in the ghetto. And... and uh, I would, as you were talking, I was thinking about your colleague and our friend there, uh, Rabbi Disenyi. I interviewed him, and, and uh, he said that one of the things that struck him was that the teachings he was giving to his community suddenly got picked up by the surrounding, by the environment, and suddenly there was a huge attention from uh, Catholic uh, media or, 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 or uh, religious uh, people, whatever. Suddenly his teachings were circ circulating beyond his community. Uh, I was led to think about that because I was thinking about your teaching, the fantastic work you're doing, 
And everything is, the, the range is community, family, community, family. But if we, if we zoom out, well, zoom is a charged word nowadays. If we, if we, if we, if we well, we zoom out and we look at the, at the, uh, at the broader society, how is your work impacting or interacting broader society beyond the Jewish community? And maybe I can, I can preface this by saying that COVID-19 is a lesson in solidarity, global solidarity. Uh, it comes from one part of the world. The entire world has to respond to it together. Uh, is this playing into your consciousness, into the consciousness of the community, in action, in theory, in prayer? How does this broader perspective a complement this powerful testimony that's community-based that we've heard so far. So I think that there's uh, many different facets to it, many different parts to it. Number one, uh, I would start from the action. I think that we have shown, the Jewish community has shown how we care about everybody. We have helped hospitals, uh, people in need. We have uh, brought in masks and uh, tests and whatever we could get from abroad to help not only the Jewish community, and much larger, you know, these, uh, we have donated to different hospitals, different places, whatever we can, collecting within the Jewish community funds to help everyone. So this, I think, has been a strong, strong message that we have to care for each other. This is on the action. And uh, again, in the action also, I think that what we have shown, uh, how we closed everything down, what I mentioned before, uh, people from other religions are saying, we should have learned from the Jews. And it's interesting, the message that they understood. They said, we realized that for the Jews, the life of one person is more important than the whole religion. It's more important than gathering in the synagogues to pray. I think this is a very, very important and powerful lesson that we were able to share with others. By example, to the, the health of a person. What the Maimonides says that, that for a person's to be healthy and wholesome is midarkei avodat Hashem. This is actually serving God. This is nishmartem od You have to really, really watch your health more than you have to watch anything else. You have to watch your health more than you have to watch the matzah. So this message that number one in religion, health is the most important thing, was an important lesson that we showed by example. But I think the most powerful teaching that it's interesting because this has been been repeated by doctors and, uh, and TV shows. We hear back and again is this famous words of the Samach Tzedek who said, "Tracht gut, wird sein gut." Things that are going to be well and it's going to be well. This positive thinking, positive attitude, is something that has been repeated as a Jewish uh, attitude in. Any situation in life, if you're going to think that it's going to be well, it's going to turn out well. And people are taking this as an important, important lesson that, again, why do we think that it's going to be well? Not because we know, not because we have seen something, not because we are so powerful, because we believe in something greater than us. That, and that greatness is only good, and it's going to only bring good to us. But you have to believe in him in order to bring down this goodness in the world. So think good and it's going to be good became a slogan today in Russia everywhere. So I think that, again, there are many, many other parts in uh, what, where we're seeing, but I think that um, the Jewish community has really shown by example of how to deal with a crisis. We, w we weren't so in, in the news as much as we are now. Like every day we're getting interviews and, uh, and re reports of what's going on in the community, how we're caring. One of the big, big projects that we just started now is actually what we call Turn Friday Night into Shabbat, bringing to people's home a Shabbat kit. In other words, sending them uh, wine, challah, food, and material that they can sit around the table and have a discussion on. So what people are saying is, look, look what the Jewish religion has given their people, that they have to, this is not only a time of crisis, they have to sit down once a week around the table and sing songs, have a discussion, feel the idea of the family. And people are saying, let's take this idea of Shabbat and use it in our religion. This is what non-Jews are saying. So I think that uh, these uh, values and these morals that have been part of our you know, bread and butter all along are now coming out as something so important, so vital 
for anyone, for any kind of uh, person from any religion. What can I say, Bevel? I'm just so proud of you. I sit here and, and there's tears, tear, tears of, of being moved as I hear your stories. I just take such, such, such great pride. And uh, God willing, Hashem above and all the tzaddikim that you get nourished from, they share in that and they, through them you'll continue to be empowered to do good work. Let's close off with some kind of a prayer. Uh, there's a song in your tradition. Uh, I can't sing because it's in Russian. Da, 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 it's all about it's all about having courage. And I was saying to myself, maybe I could ask him to explain that and to sing it because that's your whole message is be positive, think positive, have courage. Is that a good is that a good way to conclude the interview? It's an amazing way. It's actually it's a song that uh, came from peasants. And the tune, surely, and uh, the Hasidim heard this tune and they loved it and they added the words, which is, I'm not, I don't fear anyone. Uh, uh, and, and I don't believe in anyone. I only believe in God. There's nothing besides God. Uh, these are very simple words, but actually it's a very, very deep Hasidic uh, philosophy that everything is God, everything is godliness. The world is not only was created 5,780 years ago by God, it's actually been created every second by God. And not only is being created by God, but God is, is the world. Everything is really godliness. A person is godliness, but everything around us is godliness. So the words of the song is, Nyet, nyet, nikavo, kromye vo adnavo. There's nothing besides God. In such times, this message, I think, is uh, you really, I would say, you know, got it and uh, touched the core of it. It's really about that. It's all God. People say, how did this virus come? Of course, it's, you know, man-made and the people made mistakes. And I don't want to start blaming anyone. I think that uh, President Trump is doing that every day. I, uh, and I think that uh, the main point is that, of course, this was a mistake of people that probably didn't follow what God is expecting us to do. And you see today the repercussions and the results, but it's all connected to God. God didn't let go of us even in such times. God is still here. He's in our home. He's in our family. He's inside of us. And he's going to help us get through this. And we're going to, as we said in the beginning, we're going to come out of this much wiser, much better people, much more caring people, much more understanding of our capabilities, abilities, but because of his the connection to him and because of his help. So I think it's an amazing, amazing uh, message to each one of us, to myself. I, I was worth this whole interview just to hear you finish off with the song because actually just last night we were sitting together, uh, over a thousand people uh, just discussing ideas of how we can help each other. And they started singing the song, people felt really a strong connection with each other. So I believe this is the message today. Don't despair, don't be scared, don't fear anything. There's nothing good is gonna come out from being scared of this virus. Scare and fear is, is a natural part of a person because God is trying to help us not to make mistakes. That's what fear is all about. You know, don't, you should have a fear of heights in order not to stand in a dangerous place. But you don't have to fear things that are not under your control. You have to connect with something above. And as the famous Hasidic saying, if you're connected above, you don't fall below. If we're connected to something higher, we're not going to fall. Nothing to be scared about, nothing to fear. We're going to get through this and come out much better. So the song. Yet, yet, nekavo, krom yevo, adnavo, ay, 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 Yet, yet, nekavo, krom yevo, adnavo, ay, 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 and it goes on. Shkoyach, thank you so much.
All the best. Be well.